let's embark on a journey to create the cleanest 3D motion graphics. With After Effects rolling out a number of great 3D features, we're going to break down all the tips you need to know to produce visual masterpieces in the third dimension. So let's jump in. All right, before we start off and get into our official tips, you can easily create 3D objects with any of the shape tools here at the top and then make those layers 3D. With advanced 3D enabled, you can then go into the geometry options and increase the extrusion depth and no problem, instant 3D. Uh, my master object is gonna be a sphere, which requires some finesse to create. So with the ellipse tool, you can just draw out a circle by holding shift on your keyboard, then make sure it's centered and also center the anchor point. Then when you're ready, make it 3D. But before we extrude anything, let's go ahead and finesse this by going into the size and setting it to exactly two. Then under the geometry options, just set it to convex and the bevel depth to 100. And now you have a sphere and that's how it's done. You can make it bigger just by increasing the scale. And because I'm always on the quest to make the best looking sphere, let's get into those tips. The first thing I would do is create your floor with a seamless background. So create a light gray solid and immediately make it 3D. Then set its X rotation to 90 degrees and lower its Y position to be under your master 3D object. Then just increase the scale like new tomorrow. And then just feel free to create another solid just for the background. Now this first tip for the floor will come to life in my second tip, which is lighting. So usually you're gonna wanna go ahead and create yourself an environment light with shadows checked. And this will update your scene by allowing shadows to be emitted. But sometimes to really take your project to the next level, you'll need an HDRI. And you can do a quick search and get these for free and I'll go ahead and share the one that I'm using below. But just set your light source to that HDRI and bam, instant transformation. Just if the gym can work that way as well. Uh, you'll also want to explore adjusting the lights rotation and the intensity to quickly get the best look. And this is also a great time to adjust your floor and backgrounds color to help you perfect the look. And to help make the final look beautiful, we'll go ahead and take a look at the material options, but first let's go ahead and expand on this scene. It's important when you're working on 3D to absolutely center your anchor points. It's so important. Your Z anchor point should be half of the value of the extrusion depth, or in the case of a sphere, the full value of the bevel depth, which is 100. If we come here to two views, you'll see that the circle is absolutely now centered in the top view. So if we duplicate the sphere and scale it down and then adjust its X anchor point, we can easily move this over to the edge. And of course we get those shadows. Now, because we move the anchor point instead of the position, uh, we can easily adjust the rotation to move this anywhere around the sphere. And feel free to create more duplicates of small spheres if that floats your boat. And by the way, we can create a null object, make it 3D, and since it's already centered by default, when we parent the smaller circles to it, we can animate its rotation to orbit everything around under one control. And while we're here, let's go ahead and create a ring by using the ellipse tool with only stroke enabled and a width of one. And of course, make sure its anchor point is centered because that's the theme of this tip. When it's a 3D layer, set it to convex, and its bevel depth to five. And if you like, you can animate its rotation to give you a little bit of movement. But now that we have an expanded scene, we're so close to making this beautiful, but real fast. I have a full course on creating advanced 3D masterpieces in After Effects, and also to help you save time on all your projects, you can animate anything with just a few clicks with our animator Pro Pack. Just select your layers, apply a preset, and watch your animations come to life in no time. So be sure to get our 200 free templates and check out everything in the description below. All right, as promised, in order to perfect the look of your projects, you'll have to go to the material options of a layer. So right here, we have two parameters that are going to make a major impact, specular shininess and metal. The shininess is going to more or less make your 3D reflective, while the metal will increase or decrease the sharpness of color. The only time the other settings become a significant factor is when the metal is not at 100%. 
For this example, I want to set the shininess for my main object to 25% and perhaps we can apply it to another circle as well. Now, if you want to be epic and create a golden object, change the color of a sphere to a yellowish tone, then set the specular shininess of that shape to nearly 100%, and boom, we got carrots of gold. So what's cool is we can easily copy the material options and paste it to another layer, and boom, we have a well-polished scene. But don't forget about the floor layer either. You know, that's a 3D object that needs some love too, you know. All right, we need to talk about render quality real quick. Right here under the renderer options, we have the ability to improve or lower quality. Uh, when you're about to render, it's best to increase these values. So the shadow resolution should be double and it's good to increase both of these sliders by a bit, though too much might require your computer to be stored in a freezer. Okay, so I've expanded the scene for our very last tip, which is depth of field. I've done this so many times in my tutorial, so this is just a bonus technique. So when you're ready, select all your layers and pre-compose it all. Call it scene done. And from here, you're gonna wanna go ahead and apply the 3D channel extract effect. The objective with this is to adjust the black and white points to determine what will be in focus. So anything that is black will be in focus while everything else in white should be out of focus. Then it's best to smooth this all out with the depth of field effect by increasing the maximum radius. And then when you're done, just duplicate the layer, delete the effects, and apply the camera lens blur effect. From here, just set the blur map to the bottom layer and set effects and mask. Then feel free to adjust the blur radius to dial in your cinematic depth of field. And for one last bonus tip, try using Lumetri color on an adjustment layer and slightly dial in the final color that works best for your project. You can also try the noise effect as well to help remove some perfection from your work. Subscribe to be the best and always be creating.